you're probably aware that there are many, in fact thousands of species today threatened with extinction. Of these, there are some that are very difficult to save. They require completely eradicating all their predators and rebuilding habitats. And there are others that are fairly simple to save. Um, it could take literally a couple of swipes of the pen to change legislation. And the New Zealand's dolphins, Hector Zamawi's dolphins, fit into this second category, um, literally overnight by um, restricting certain practices like fishing and uh, oil prospecting in the areas where they're found. Um, these dolphins can be saved and their populations can come back from the brink. Uh, in the case of Maui's dolphins, there are 55 of them left. Uh, but population studies have shown that without the bycatch from trawl fishing and gillnet fishing, and without practices like um, sonic booming, uh, sonic air cannons uh, from oil prospecting, these dolphins can build up to their original populations. However, uh, the New Zealand government um, has recently opened up the marine mammal sanctuary um, where the Maui dolphins are found for new oil prospecting. When these companies are looking for oil um, underneath the, the seabed, they use what are called air cannons, which um, let out a very, very intense um, burst of sound that reflects off the oil um, if there is any. And to give you an idea of how intense this sound is, it's 252 decibels. 252 is not a number that normally goes with decibels. And this is because the decibel scale is logarithmic. So uh, a sound that has 110 decibels is 10 times more powerful than a sound that has just 100 decibels. A sound that's 125 decibels uh, will cause hearing damage um, to humans um, if it's prolonged for more than a few seconds. Uh, the loudest sounds that you're going to encounter in day-to-day -day life are around 140 decibels, which is the sound of a jet engine taking off right next to your head. Uh, to get more than that, we have to go to things like um, the explosion of Krakatoa, which is one of the largest volcanic eruptions of our times in Indonesia, uh, which was rated at 180 decibels. Um, the theoretical limit for sound in the air, um, I won't go into the science of this, but is 194 decibels. In water you can get, uh, because of the nature of the medium, you can get stronger sounds. So these sonic cannons are 252 decibels. Um, several thousand times, in fact 100,000 times more powerful than the sound of a jet engine taking off. And they need to be, if that sounds kind of ridiculous, um, it needs to be that loud because these, the sound that's emitted from these cannons is traveling down through several thousand feet of seawater, which is no big deal. Then it travels through several thousand feet of rock or lime or or sand or whatever's on the bottom. Finally, it encounters the oil and uh, most of the sound continues or is absorbed by the oil. Um, some of it, just a small amount, reflects back and yet there's still so much sound left that it can travel back through all that rock and sand and lime um, and back through the several thousand feet of, of seawater and be detected by the boat. So this is a, a literal death ray of sound that's being emitted. And so you have that on the one hand, and on the other hand you have one of the most sensitive hearing systems on the planet. Uh, the middle ear of dolphins and all other cetaceans um, is incredibly tuned in. It can, they can detect through echolocation um, objects the size of a ping pong ball at 200 meters away in the water. Uh, no wonder that wherever uh, we see prospecting for oil with the use of these, these air cannons. Um, we see mass strandings. In 2012, off the coast of Peru, uh, 900 uh, beaked dolphins and porpoises were stranded, and uh, almost all of them had cases of um, hemorrhaging, bleeding in their middle ear, ruptured skulls, uh, all sorts of damage to organs. Um, and these sort of cases have happened all over the world, um, off the coast of America and anywhere where there's been oil prospecting due to um, the 
its air cannons. And so in New Zealand, where we have an area that's the territory of the last remaining 55 Maui dolphins in existence, the New Zealand government, uh, headed by Prime Minister John Key, has opened up that area to um, these death rays of, of sound. Um, and he was called out by the, um, the head of the Green Party in Parliament to ask the following question to him. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does he stand by his government's decision to tender for oil exploration permits in over 3,000 square kilometres of the North Island Marine Mammal Sanctuary, a sanctuary that was established to protect the last 55 Maui's dolphins left on planet Earth? Well, Mr. Mr. Speaker, Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, yes, and I, I'm not surprised to see the Greens' opposition to that because they're fundamentally opposed to everything, but I was surprised to see the Labor leader come out and say that. And the reason I say that, Mr Speaker, is a very serious point, and that is that Paiakura, 40% of New Zealand's gas is included there, so one can only assume when that gas field is closed down what will happen to gas prices for New Zealanders. There are 23 permits for oil being drilled there, 18 of which were, were actually issued under a Labor government. Mr Speaker, what the leader of the Labor Party is saying today... Uh, order. Our Prime Minister, of course, has never wanted to... This is an opportunity to have a go at the Labour Party, even if the Labour Party weren't involved in this question. Uh, but what he's doing here is he's evading the issue of the new oil prospecting um, that he's given permission for. Um, existing wells aren't as much a threat as um, putting in new wells in deeper water where there is a much greater risk of, of spills as well, um, but which involve huge amounts of, of surveying and the deaths of many cetaceans as a result. Does the Prime Minister understand that there is a difference in the risk to Maui's dolphins from existing production wells and his government's decision to add new risks to Maui's dolphins from new seismic surveying and new drilling of exploratory wells, which is what the government has approved? Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, um, in, a, in a sort of phrase, I suppose, what a load of nonsense. If that was absolutely correct, then given that we've been drilling in the Taranaki region since the 1960s and there's never been a situation where a Maui dolphin has been killed as a, as a result of that, you think it would have happened sometime in the last 50 years. It's just the mumbo-jumbo that the Greens go on about. Oh, no. But what's no. incredible is the Labor oh, no. government... Nonsense and mumbo-jumbo, according to the Honourable John Key. But let's think about what he's just said for a second. Uh, he's made a scientific claim that not a single dolphin has died due to oil exploration and drilling since 1960. 1960 was more than a decade before Greenpeace was formed um, and well before any kind of scientific data or research was being conducted on the Maui's dolphin population. We knew almost nothing about them then, let alone were we taking data on Maui's dolphins that were being washed up on the beaches or um, found dead. To claim that no dolphins have died since 1960 is, um, you could only know that if you were an all-knowing, omnipotent John Key. The world's leading expert on the effects of seismic surveying to cetaceans, um, Linda Welgard from Dalhousie University in Canada, estimates that 3% of cetacean deaths as a result of, of this stuff going on are actually detected, and that's when you're looking for it. Okay, um, If a dolphin swims under or nearby uh, where seismic surveying is, is taking place, they're not necessarily going to die straight away. They could lose their hearing and as a result they can't feed and so they die of starvation. And it doesn't look like uh, that dolphin has died as a result of the oil exploration. Other ways that it can lead to death are through DCS, decompression sickness, uh, damage to organs, strandings, separation from their pods. These dolphins could go miles or hundreds of miles um, before they die as a result of this uh, seismic surveying. So to claim that no dolphins have died um, as a result of, of the seismic surveying and oil exploration is a ridiculous and completely redundant scientific claim. Mumbo jumbo.
In fact, if the entire remaining Maui's dolphin population was wiped out by seismic surveying, all 55 of them, um, of those, only two would probably be detected um, and attributed to, to this cause. Um, we cannot afford to lose a single Maui's dolphin. The population is so low that each one um, is vital to the, to the genetic pool of the species. So we cannot afford this risk um, within the territory of Maui's dolphins. We know around the world, we've seen in the evidence, it does cause cetacean deaths. Uh, so there's no refuting the fact that by prospecting for oil within their territory, we are dramatically increasing the risk to the species. It's really as simple as this. If the members write, then over the last 64 years or 54 years, a Maui dolphin would have been killed as a result of the exploration activity. Not one single dolphin has. So we've had a 54 year experiment and nothing's happened. As we've seen, we don't know that. And John Key, unless he's an all knowing God, does not know that either. So what we do know is that over the last 54 years, about 2,000 Maui's dolphins have been killed due to human activity, mostly due to gillnet fishing and trawling. Um, but also there's a huge amount of, of those deaths that uh, where the cause of death is completely unknown, um, or where they died back in the 1960s and 70s when no records were being kept of, of how they were dying. Um, a dolphin could wash up on the beach and too far go in a state of decomposition, um, or it could die elsewhere. Maybe it doesn't wash up on the beach, maybe it's eaten by a shark once it dies. Um, as we've seen, only 3% of deaths due to uh, seismic surveying are actually detected. So to claim that um, not a single dolphin has died, even if he gets his finger out and while he says it, is completely ridiculous. Um, there's no way of knowing that and, and the wealth of scientific evidence on this subject um, shows that um, anywhere there is seismic surveying in a marine mammal sanctuary or habitat, there are going to be a wealth of deaths. If you live in New Zealand and you vote, then you can make a big difference to the future prospects of the species um, by voting for a party which supports um, no further incursions into the habitat of the species and further protection from gillnet fishing and trawling. Um, the Green Party is such a party. If you don't live in New Zealand, then you can still make a big difference by um, clicking one of the links below. Um, to sign the petitions or to um, donate money to our fundraiser. Thank you very much for watching this and I hope you can help us to try and save these last 55 Maui's Dolphins.